And good day, listeners from around the world. This is the Wide World of Motorsports podcast, recorded for the week of April 25th, 2021, and simulcast on Radio Waterloo, CKMS 102.7. You're joining Michael Wallace, co-host, the Wide World of Motorsports, and yours truly, James Jordan, here in the studio. And uh, is this where we start on the on the podcast here, the Bushy McBush race? Bush, right? Yeah. yeah, that's what happens when you get a bunch of drunk Bush fan drinkers, whatever you want to call them, and ask them what they want to call the race. Oh, and, and and social media too, like Gen Z or whatever Gen it is. Yeah, uh, uh, you got to blame them for that too. You know what? I it it was effective. It got it it, it worked. I'll give them yep. that much. <laughs> someone someone was sitting around a. Uh, conference table and just went out on a whim and it worked. So <laughs> good, yeah, good, 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 on, on them. good for good for them. I guess. Um, and I, I don't remember the track. I feel bad just saying, Oh, Kansas. Some, someone look it up. But there's a, tra- what, what track was it where they were renaming a parking lot? Oh, they, or, and, or it was a new track being built and they're, they're asking right now whether they're going to name one of the lots. I don't remember the track, but just Google. Someone should just Google it. But that's cool, oh, though. That's a thing now, I guess, right? Asking people to uh, it, it gives that interaction. Fan engagement. The fan engagement. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Speaking of, <laughs> on the note of fan engagement of our favorite fan engagement sport, FE. Mm-hmm. Um, they had some energy management issues. So at some point, no doubt. with one of their first races just recently at a legitimate road course, uh, Effie was at, and uh, each driver they have a whatever track it was, each driver they have a a certain amount of battery power that they can use, and if they use too much, you'll you're SOL. So yeah, that's what happened at Valencia. And well, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. There's there's obviously with that uh, the situation where a safety car comes out the FIA will take power, it's preset, an amount of energy from each battery so that no one has, like, extra power. So with four safety cars during the event, at that point, you know, you're it's slim pickings with the power, and that was on the part of FIA, but it, uh, it resulted in not too many cars finishing. It was, like, half the field at the end of the I race. Mean- that's the whole thing about Formula E, though. Formula E has was never designed and intended to run on a on a right. proper road course, right? They were they've the whole idea of them was to run on street courses in city centers to be low impact on the environment, and so people could walk to the track instead of having to drive to the track and all you know all that that green stuff. Um, so this is not surprising. Uh, you know, you and I were talking about it earlier this week and I'm pretty sure this is the first year that formula E can run the entire Monaco grand prix circuit. They usually, I'm almost positive. It was them that ran a condensed version of it, but, um, uh, yeah, I guess they'll learn for next time. Well, yeah. So for the formula E race, the, the, for the 2021 E Prix, they will race the full Monaco F1 circuit. So you're correct. And they, they announced yeah. that just only a couple of weeks ago. And that's yeah. Re- yeah, right in the first time in their history. Um, they were the, the last three times they went to Monaco, they raced on a shortened layout. Yeah. And yeah. Drivers exactly. turned right before the, I'm probably screwing the pronunci- pronunciation on this. I screw the pronunciation up on a lot of stuff, Wallace. And a side note here. I, okay. I I'll Let realize me. I'm saying shit terribly, and I'm like, and I'm like, wow, Wallace must think I'm an idiot. <laughs> so, no, but I always just think you're doing it ironically. <laughs> like, I always think you're doing it on purpose, and then then I'll say something correctly, and you'll go, oh, is that how you're supposed to say it? And there's, you know, we'll have this conversation. And <laughs> there's been too many times in real life where I've done. I've actually interviewed like people of prominence <laughs> in racing, and I've for not. I even interviewed basketball players, and I knew that they're not called periods; they're called quarters. But I still called them periods, and it wasn't they're periods of play, but it nice. wasn't all wrong. But still, nice. I I feel like it, I was like, well, this was thinking it. So we're anyway. So Massane <laughs> and Mira, all the names of the turns, the, the Mar- hairpin and in the at, Ma- in the Massane tunnel, or Massane and Maribo, yeah, right. The hairpin and the tunnel were cut out completely. Yeah, yeah. So um, that'll be that'll be cool to see though. 
uh, Monaco, obviously classic track and one of the most seen, like one of the most nicest looking tracks in the world since it's so obviously the area is just so unique and historic. So, um, going back to this past weekend's race though, and going to say, you know, I don't think Mercedes and they, they finished third, uh, they managed to finish first and third, sorry, after taking into account with the lack of power. So you, you don't think they're complaining about it, right? So to say it was a bit of a disaster, though, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not going to I'm not going to trash them. Um, but, yeah, you're right. They weren't made for that. We all knew that. And I think mm-hmm. going into something like that, it's it's it. I there's people out there that will trash F.E. And I, I, I wouldn't go to that extent. But you got to give them credit for at least trying something out because I would love to see FE, something like Mall Sport, if it would work. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say no to going to see an FE race at our oh, no, I wouldn't, road courses. I wouldn't say no either, but you want to talk about a track that would drain a battery. <laughs> In that <laughs> weather Sport, and, and, and all that? Yeah, Mall Sport's, Mall Sport's doing that for sure. The, the batteries will blow up sometimes how hot it gets in the summer. Yeah. Uh, oh, so, I know. The, uh, but yeah, so they, uh, they'll, yeah, you're right. They'll learn about that and, um, they'll go on from there and, and, uh, good, good, good. You know, I like to see a series try to do something different and, 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 uh, yeah, you know, so going, going on from there though, some more recent Mm -hmm. news for the second consecutive year due to public health concerns, forcing a cancellation for the Canadian mm. Grand Prix in Ma- Montreal. Yeah. This news was first reported just recently, and Pierre Fitzgibbon, the economy minister of La Belle de Provence, made it official <laughs> during a joint news conference alongside the mayor of Montreal, Valérie Plante, several federal and provincial officials, and the racist promoter. This, they weren't kidding around. They, no. They were saying... It, it, just imagine being there, like you know it's going to happen. So, yeah, obviously they called that, and it, it it's not happening. And um, unfortunate, obviously there, but there it's it's not too bad though because there there are some more details behind it, which are good. Obviously there'll be a race again going down yeah. the line there, and they'll actually extend some of their agreement with yeah. F one, which is cool. Yeah, which is uh, to no extra expense uh, from what I've heard. Right. Um, so, you know, obviously um, Canada's got some strict uh, – is a little stricter on travel uh, on travel right now. And, they're, you know, they're required <laughs> – Just two, a little. Two, yeah, they're required two weeks. Um, quarantine just is – does not work. And uh, we just don't want to let them in. So, yeah, so they're going to Turkey. Which is funny, so they're going from one COVID hotspot to another <laughs> COVID hotspot, and yeah. um, it just our government won't, uh, the Canadian government won't sway off of right. the restrictions. No, for, federal uh, and, and yeah, I'm surprised even on a provincial level there, because our federal government is onto the left side of the political spectrum, and I'm pretty sure they're probably pretty close there on mm-hmm. the left, because I know... Uh, the, they, they, you know, some of the, some of the people in Quebec have different views than some of the, the rest of us, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that uh, man, five or fifty one million dollars just for hosting two races. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's so. That's why it's a good thing that they're not gonna they're not gonna charge them for something they're not getting or recharge them or charge them more. They're just they've just tailed those to the uh, the end of the contract, right? Right, the two extra races. And we were so. speaking about this just before earlier. And both levels of government are so the federal and provincial. They're pledging to invest up to five point five million dollars combined to promote the race internationally to help That's draw awesome. tourists and, and F one enthusiasts to the core. There, the. Uh, you know, the area has been battered by the pandemic. And as you were saying, you know, that's in some cases, that's that's definitely not new. But in some cases, it uh, depends on what country you're going to. It's like, you know, it makes sense that they're going to Turkey in this kind of situation because they'll take the, you know, the, no one's going to say no to that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. So that's uh, that's unfortunate. But, um, you Francois know, Francois Dumontier said, yeah, they're confident next year given the rollout with the vaccination campaign up here. So Canadian race fans will see Formula 1 in, 
in 2022. You just got to stick. We got to stick in there again for another year, folks. It's yeah. going crazy, man. I'm going crazy. Yeah. I need my racing, man. I need to smell the nitrous. No. Okay. I need to smell the gasoline. I need tires and gasoline. I need and rub burning rubber. Clutch. Yeah, I miss yeah. all that. <laughs> um, absolutely. And it, and, it, and it didn't stop there. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, but with uh we're gonna we're gonna look into god it's gotta talk about jimmy and indycar and uh yeah. you know what it's been pretty good with so we go we're gonna go back to skippy and uh the first race of the season alex yeah. palau or, or yeah. i just call him alex poo for whatever reason yeah he, uh, he picked up his first career win in his mm-hmm. first race with chip ganassi racing he That's held off huge. a pair of series champions at, yep. at Skippy, Not and um, you know, and he, you know, he was able to win over some of his uh, his fellow Spanish peoples, um, his fellow countrymen, if you will, mm-hmm. who were racing in Italy at that point: Fernando Alonso and Carlos Sanz and F1. Yeah. And uh, so he was able to win there. Polo. Palau is Poo mm. is the only uh, second Spaniard to win in the IndyCar series, joining Oriol Severa, who Oriol Servia. Servia. <laughs> Good, you know we're gonna get you there. Like that's that's your jo- that's that's gonna be your new task here on the, yeah, the, yeah. the or, podcast. Yeah. Is to <laughs> correct my correct damn, you. Yeah, I just sit here and correct you. But he he was good at Montreal in two thousand five. Won there. So um, yeah, he's in, a good he's a good wheel man. Yeah. He he used a two two stop strategy to win that one, and he had he had a hard charging willpower there, and Scott Dixon behind him, and uh, Dixon, the uh, reigning champion, finished third, and it was followed by Pulse Sitter Pato Award. So yeah, well, and this was an interesting race because you got to see the two different strategies of three stops to two stops. Right. And, um, you know, Patricio Pato award here. He's, I mean, this, he did, the three he, stop. Is, he did the three stop finish fourth, but he was so fast all weekend and it was really surprising. Right. But the real, the real big surprise saw surprise was, uh, Joseph Newgarden's mistake on the first lap that took out oh, um, man. three other, three other, um, that was crazy. Yes. Yeah, I just dropped some wheels. He dropped wheels onto the grass, and he thought he could hold it, and it just snapped on him, and he came back across. Um, he hit Ryan Hunter Ray pretty hard, which uh, the arrow screen that we see on the Indy cars right now um, actually did a did its job and protected Ryan Hunter Ray. And right. um, you know, after, uh, during the race, they interviewed Colton Herta, and because he was mixed up in that, and he just says. I was watching him and waiting to see which way Joseph was going to go. And he didn't go either way. And I ran into them. he says, usually, usually they go one way. Right. And he didn't go anywhere. And I had nowhere to go. (laughs) Jimmy did a fantastic job staying out of the wreck. And I think the first thing that I said, going back to, you know, his, his Talladega Daytona racing days, I think him getting through big ones definitely helped. Uh, it, it probably clicked in for him, and and even I'm pretty sure it was Paul Tracy who said, not Dick Tracy, folks. Not Paul Dick Tracy. Tracy <laughs> Paul Tracy said that. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was him. He said the same thing. I was, and, and it was probably due to his super speedway experience that uh, helped him get it out of in his first lap in an official IndyCar race, and there mm-hmm. was a big one, basically. You know that. I, I thought that was cool, and I, I couldn't. I thought he was in. I couldn't believe he got out of it, and he, he had another wreck throughout the race. He managed to stay out of the wall. And same thing with, and, and this is what's going to be consistent with them going to Saint Pete. Mm-hmm. Um, is Jimmy was, and it was a very similar situation where Jimmy was, he was, he was, letting, he was basically figuring out how to do it, but he was also later on in the race, he was starting to get. Mid to later on in the race, you started to get consistent with the leaders, mm-hmm. just just uh, within within competitive distance, not by much. He was within the same whatever second they were running. So he, uh, 
but then eventually throughout the end of the race, he had, then he had, then in both races, his times were just all over the place. So mm-hmm. he'd be, be running a couple seconds different here and there. So um, he did, uh, he, you know, he is figuring it out, um, you know, clearly by looking at his times because, you know, looking at it in you know, his first ever street course race, his first time in his life running in a street course yeah. at St. Pete. And, yeah, you with know, multiple with multiple different um you know elements uh, pave, pavements on the you know, you right. had concrete there, you had the concrete you had concrete, runway concrete and asphalt. And so you're changing surfaces constantly there and it's bumpy as like hell that, and yeah. it's tight. It's tight and it's um and it's fast. It, you know, you people don't think that street courses can be fast, but that's a fast street right. course. You know, he did have some misfortunes in that race as well. But the same thing with his time, eventually he ended up figuring it out. And, and and you know, again, with that only, that's the second race of the season. They only had a week. They didn't have a tiny time off it. So, boom, you're into another race. Colton Herrera, he, 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 he didn't have a very good season opener. He bounced back, got yeah. the pole on Saturday and... And, uh, well, that's that's Colton Herta and Joseph Newgarden. That's redemption mm-hmm. from Alabama, right? You know, right. Colton wins the race. Joseph finishes second. So um, that's that's um, that's a pickup for them for sure. Herta being in that first lap crash in in Bama, so he he had a good good look coming into this race. And with the whole field though, just being within a second from each other, uh, just from first to twenty fourth and qualifying. It's his fifth pole of his career since he was paired with his father, Brian, as his mm-hmm. race strategist. Colt yeah. Herrera and Brian Herrera have won now poles at four of the same tracks, St. Pete, Laguna Seca, Portland, and Mid-Ohio. And Jack Harvey qualified second for Michael Shank Racing and was followed yeah. by Joseph Newgarden, who was uh, he triggered the first lap crash at Barber that wrecked Herrera uh, uh, that week. So... Uh, Pagano was fourth behind Team Penske teammate Newgarden, while Sebastian Bourdais and Pato Award rounded out the fast six. Hinch from Oakville, Ontario, he qualified in the 12th spot. Um, shout out to Hinch. And uh, Dalton Kellett of Stouville, Ontario. Stouville. Stouville. See, man? <laughs> what, so what is it with the pronunciation? So S-T-O-U, am I... Is there like a different language? I'm thinking. Like, am I trying to say it? Is that how, how would you say that in French? Would that is oh, that I, how you? I have. I don't I know why I'm saying stuff like Stouville. Stouville. Like, is that a weird can? I don't know. You 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 have a Canadian accent, but you say it right, right? So I don't know. Man, I'm, wow. I mean, I'm just got I, no brain cells left. Uh, maybe <laughs> that could be. I, I have no idea. I just I've heard it before, right? Maybe you yeah, haven't yeah. heard somebody say. It before, I should have heard but... it, but whatever. Uh, Jimmy Jam. <laughs> And just, yeah, with, with his second start, he qualified 23rd. And, uh, you know, going into that race, he, he caused a couple of yellows. He ended up hitting the wall at one point, just just kind of bruising the wall there. Had an issue kind of getting her going. I had to go down pit road, but whatever. Um, but, he, you know, he finished the race on all fours. And uh, that's all that matters for him. Um, some cool other news, though. Uh, Will Power has signed with Team Penske to a contract extension. To at mm-hmm. least through to 2023. And uh, obviously that's something good for Penske. Doesn't have to worry about that slot for a couple of years. And um, so, well, so that's cool, yeah. Signed up a solid driver too, so. <laughs> yeah, with 39 career victories, six pole positions. Championship. He's just actually close yeah. to tying Mario Andretti with the, am I, or Mario, no, I'm sorry. Andretti, am I saying that right now? <laughs> he has the career record of 67, so. Um, yeah. Signed a good driver, absolutely. Going on What's to what, what? Yeah, what is next in the wide What's world of next? motorsports? So yeah, so this weekend though, what is next this weekend? Wallace, the NTT IndyCar Series is going to Lone mm-hmm. Star State, going to get yeah. some black and gold. Yeah, some Texas T. Genesis three hundred. Yep, the they're going to do the Texas two step all around the track. Mm-hmm. One uh, <laughs> day, a one day race. Show up. I'm down. Practice. Practice for an hour and a half. That's so Texas, eh? It is. Qualify for an hour. Race. 
and then it's they're like, out of there. It's like a showdown. It's like, 212 laps, 300 miles. Yeah, it's like a duel. It's like a show. It reminds me of like a, two guys in the, you mm-hmm. know, wah, 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 the day yeah, bell. Exactly. Stick them up. Which, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. And, you know, uh, Scott First Dixon. First oval before, the only oval before right. the Indy 500, too. You know, I wish Jimmy was running the ovals. A lot of people are saying now, there's a lot of people trashing Jimmy, but realistically, the real talk, like the real fans are saying, hey, why didn't this guy just run what he's good at? Like that, Like they're saying, hey, man, let's see Jimmy what he's good at. And that's what I like to hear. I think I, I just... I just think that he doesn't want to run the ovals because he's got kids and a wife. And I bet you, I would almost bet money yeah. that his wife agreed to him running <laughs> IndyCar if he didn't <laughs> run ovals. I would almost bet you money because, because uh, I don't know, because there's why reasons. You? <laughs> yeah. there's gotta You're be a married reason. man. There's reasons. That's all like I got to say. <laughs> you know, like you said, why would you, why would you give up what you're good at? But, and, but the and wife says be, goes though, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but you know what? One of his kids needs to step up and go, you got to step up, dad. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need to do You need to do the ovals. Cause man, you know, we've seen Jimmy good at Texas and I'd love to see Jimmy back at Texas in in an open wheel that'd be awesome but hey you know what we never see you never know what we'll see down the road let's just hope he, yeah. he's sitting there this weekend going damn i wish i was there let's hope yeah. he, he says sign me up for next weekend maybe they'll do a test who knows but so we're going to go back to a little bit earlier we say we'll get to this another cancellation news in the mm. hashtag covid cancel culture news uh, uh imsa yeah. cancels yeah. The CTMP race weekend, which we were uh, we were kind of batting around, which which is the problem with some things in life, is because sometimes you make like oh wait, wait let's let's do this and that, and then you get your hopes. You're basically getting your hopes up, and we should have known, Wallace. We should have known this was going to happen yeah. with the cancellation of CTMP race weekend. And uh, you know, as much as I love Watkins, uh, you know, them getting the second uh, second race to replace that still sucks. <laughs> yeah, it, well, of sucks. course it does because because you want to, you know, they were supposed to be in Canada at Mossport for July first. I mean that that's awesome, but yeah, I mean it's like you said, the writing was on the wall. I think we knew it was coming. At the very least, it was going to be run behind closed doors, right? So yeah, but yeah, so they've replaced it. With uh, Watkins Glen International again, a little track upstate New York. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, <laughs> they're doing the WeatherTech no. 240 there, what? so Where? a two-hour. Four- yeah, Christopher it's, Watkins. It's, yeah, Christopher Watkins Glen. Oh. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so we'll see. You we'll get to see a double header at Watkins Glen. Uh, it'll be interesting because uh, you know. They run the six hour first and then they do the two hour, 40 minutes. Most teams are probably going to stay there for yeah. the week. Um, but then that runs into problems with um, hotels, right? They've only taken hotels or whatever for this time period of Watkins Glen. Now they've extended it. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. You, basically what, you're going to want is to run six hours, not get into trouble. So your car is good to go for the, the, the weather tech two forty. Cause if you get any heavy crash damage in the six hours, it's going to be a, a long week to get that car fixed. Um, because they'll just do it at the track. There's no way they're going to load it up and try to bring it back to the race shop. Right. Yeah. It makes, makes sense. I mean, it's, it, it's really no different than coming to Canada. Like if you have a big wreck in the right. six hours, you still, the worst part is, is that you spend a day traveling. So they lose a day of working on the car where at least here, the, everything's going to be set up okay. for them. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and, and we've seen it before. I mean, I've definitely seen it where we didn't get cars in Canada because they had issues at, at the, the Glen, border. So, or, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or even at the border too. Yeah. So, I've, I've heard of that, which is crazy, but, there's, there's but anyway, issues so behind that, but yeah, you know what? Um, maybe for us in a sense, it's good because, uh, 
maybe maybe we would have had it wouldn't that have been around the week we would have done an i race the i race that we're planning on doing i think that's the week oh that that's the week before before the six hours right okay it's always i think that i racing always does that they do it a week before uh, right the, the big race so maybe they'll do do you think they'll do another I don't know. They should do, they should do one for Mossport because Damn we're it. losing Mossport. I know, right? Dude. Oh. A WAMS. We, I, I don't even feel like we would have that. to wait. I feel like I'd be like a boxer who just got like a knockout on a fight and he's like, yeah, I'll fight another guy in two months because I'm still good to go. It's like, mm-hmm. I feel like I wouldn't need to practice at Mossport. I f- well, no. I would. We would have to do some basic stuff like how to figure out how to switch drivers. But folks, yeah. side side note, keep your eye out for the next couple of months. Uh, we got a little something coming for you for the Wide World of Sports Esports team. So I'd like, love to see you guys support us there for that. Side, side note mm-hmm. for some yeah. sports, esports car racing. But um, So the next – so just, just to wrap up MC here, the next race is May 14th to the 16th at Mid-Ohio. It's a two-hour, 40-minute <laughs> race. And um, – we're going to have Mid uh, Ohio. Nice track to go at. I feel like it's a tight track. track. It, it's a, it's a, it's a tight Is that track. correct to use it, that term for that track? Yeah, tight? it is. It's yeah. narrow. It's narrow. Absolutely. It's narrow. It's flowing. It's, um, it's a always, um, always, always, always produces great racing. And mm-hmm. it's the only track that I know that the start <laughs> line is not where the finish line is. Okay. So, so the start the start line is on the back stretch, the long back stretch, um, just before the kink, and then the finish line is on the pit road stretch. And uh, wow. I don't know too many tracks that do. Did stuff they do like that, that when Xfinity raced there? Yep, they do it with everything that races there because because you come out of this weird carousel um, that's a, a long, long, long right hander and then a quick left onto the front straightaway. Um, I, I think what, what's going to happen is cars are going to be in the middle of that carousel when, uh, when the green flag goes. So it just causes mayhem. Right, so yeah. they, they, they have the start finish line down here. So they try to get everybody out of the, the hair, this uh, paperclip turn here. Uh, there's a name for, I forget what the name of that corner is, but anyways, and then they get all lined up here and just, I think it's just before or just after the kink on the back straightaway, there's a, is the start line. So in IMSA, when the cars cross the finish line on the pit straight, the clock starts, but they don't get the green flag until the back stretch, which is interesting because they want to make sure that they cover the correct distance. If you want to get real nerdy about endurance yeah. racing, it's all <laughs> about distance and covering the correct distance and and all that. Right. Yeah. That well, stuff, yeah, so. and, and um, I don't know I remember, just remember seeing because I remember the one year I think weather played an effect for the Xfinity race, and I I was just blown away by how they were. To, I think I was one of the first races in a long time that was in rain. This is a few years ago, and yeah. I was I'm not a fan of Mid Ohio. Racing it e- virtually, but oh, no, well, I through the NASCAR games. I haven't done an eye racing, but you know it's fun mm. to watch on TV. And and, and if if I think if wonder what the weather is going to look like going into something like that at a track that is tight like that, be yeah. cool to like be cool to see with the the hydroplaning at certain points of the track how they how the cars would change their lines and whatnot in certain turns, and then as it dries up. It's good to go, right? So yeah. I love I love seeing the great equalizer in any racing. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah. Any uh, early picks Ohio. for that? Do you think you could throw out some names? Or is this one of those uh, sports car racing things where it could be anyone? It's one of those. Oh, yeah, it is. It's one of those sports right. car things that it can be anyone. IMSA is so tight and so close right now. Um, I mean, it's going to be a, more than likely it'll be a Corvette that wins, wins in GTLM. Um, but I mean, prototypes, I don't know, throw, pick whoever, um, you know, uh, GTD, it's going to be whoever LMP two. Yeah. I don't know. It's, that's way too hard. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, sp- yeah, but it's continuing on the unfortunate news of cancellation for us Canadian peeps and maybe some yeah. of the people that cross the border and SRO America canceled their Victoria Day Reese weekend at CTMP, which was scheduled Shocker. for the May 22nd to May 23rd weekend. All of the quarantine requirements, including expensive hotel stays and, and approved hotels at your expense with uh, obviously having the quarantine and stuff, just not possible. And, no. and in separate also as well, Porsche Career Cup North America race is scheduled for CTMP as part of the Victoria Day Speed Rest weekend have also been canceled. Um, they'll be replaced with a doubleheader at COTA May 2nd. And uh, IMSA, you know, obviously with that cancellation as well, with all that, considering what is the, you know, at this point, what are we looking at going for this is the scheduled weekend for September 5th for the when NASCAR Camping World Truck Series with comes with the Chevy Silverado 250. And, uh, you know, wondering if that's going to be still on or what the situation like that's going to be. And we've actually inquired with some heads, some peoples, some peoples on the high end. With NASCAR, mm-hmm. and hopefully we'll get back to you with some news that we can hopefully get, uh, you know, look with things uh, not looking good. Um, and also the the uh, the Micra Cup, the Mirka, I was about to say it, Mirka. The Micra Cup, they, uh, they also just, I think it was today or yesterday, announced their cancellation of, uh, so yeah, Victoria Speed Fest weekend not happening with nothing. So that's that's unfortunate, and and with that yeah. uh, being said, you know, uh, the situation here in Canada not looking good. Race winner uh, this past weekend at uh, Talladega, he tweeted actually to some of his Canadian fans, you know, a retweet of Doug Ford getting all serious, saying everything's closed down. He's like, he, he said he feels bad for his Canadian friends and his fans. So, uh, makes me feel good. yeah, it does. You know, it makes everything great. That makes us being <laughs> basically imprisoned inside worth it. Um, but yeah, so uh, go, going on to some NASCAR news here. Yeah. Jeb Burton lands his first Xfinity Series win in a rain-shortened race. At Does Talladega. he win that? Does he win that race if it doesn't rain? That's my question. That's a good question, but. You know, they always say with a track like Talladega or, or, or whatever, it's anyone's race, uh, you know, at the end there. Who knows what mm-hmm. would have happened if there would have been another big one or who knows. I think there would have been another wreck because it was just after a seven car wreck in the backstretch. But Burton held the lead under caution when the rain came in. So after NASCAR brought the Xfinity Series cars down to pit road, they just got worse from there. And they were just like, hey, there's no way we're, we're fixing this. Uh, we were listening to Natalie Decker's audio for that entire race. She was having some issues. You know what? And I'm straight up. So Taldega is on a old <laughs> um, native burial ground. And they say it's haunted. And I was listening to some of the transmissions. And from what I understand of shortwave radio and other frequency stuff, the, the, the you know, I'm pretty sure there is some, you know, there's these spooky Haunt, house haunting shows and they pull out these radios to hear them talk on the frequency things that's what went on folks i think her, her radio's down <laughs> natalie had a bad race because of the ghosts so she's she did not have a good time she was really upset when it started raining out but i'm sure burton wasn't in his first ever career win uh there yeah, I'm so sure he you know fine. and um the debate was I, I saw during in his in, in his in car he was very calm and collected until he was kind of coming back a pit road and seeing his guys I'm sure he then he started getting you know all excited in in, in car and it's one of those debates and I think deep down you know he's you know with his dad and his uncle you know those are some old school guys you know you go mm-hmm. back to talking about does a rain win really count and of course that argument went on social media as you know but I'm pretty sure everyone was pretty you know everyone's good with him. Everyone, everyone likes Jeb, so everyone gives him the thumbs up. Yeah, there. my question isn't whether is a rain win a win. My question is, would he be won the race without the rain? Uh, but mm-hmm. you have to be there when when it counts, and I guess he was there, right? So, well, you know, he he could have been on that wreck on the backstretch on lap eighty five, and and he, you know, he, you know, the, anything can happen on on a big one, and and just the, I think the fact that. There was all those guys up front that made it out of a wreck like that. Uh, you know, I would have been inch for sure interesting to see a, a finish. Um, 
or you know even in some cases they will you know they will know that weather's coming and they will announce hey we've got a few laps left and, and that's happened but uh, that they didn't know the weather was coming and it would have been nice to see some guys jockey for position mm-hmm. at the end there knowing that it's gonna or as it spits you see them go but it was yeah. what it was and, and under yellow and it was one of those things where it was uh, under yellow because of the wreck so um but you know it was legit for him and the yeah, first for him. yeah the, you know the first 225 lap stages ran without an incident and the second stage went to Noah Gragson who moved past Sinjerk on lap 50 to get the green white checkered and um, who's leading points right now in the Xfinity series that's a very good question Wallace um here with the hard hitting deep questions it's my job you know actually you know what we should have had that up anyways Austin Sindrick he's oh, okay. with 367 points with two wins six top fives and then Daniel Hemrick 308 points no wins but four top fives and Harrison Burton 275 points and then Jeb Burton 270 Justin Haley at 259 ran off the top five for the Xfinity Series standings. And, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see how it goes, though. It, uh, you know, obviously with how there's been so many different drivers winning in these series, you know, with the the, the chase ultimately, you know, well, I still call it the chase. It's the NASCAR playoffs, but for some of us, mm-hmm. it's, it's the chase. So, but yeah, so some of that's getting locked up, man. There's less and less space there. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see what that happens. And then, and then we... We look on to over into the Cup Series side of things. Same situation where, uh, you know, Brad Keselowski taking up another spot. There's only, I believe, six positions left in, wow. in the playoff runnings. And it was interesting how we were kind of talking a couple of weeks ago. We were just kind of throwing out predicting that mm-hmm. it would potentially come down to a situation where, and I think, I don't know if you predicted it, it would be all the, all the slots will be filled, but it'll end up coming down to, points just all like almost like old school style i i think it i think it will like yeah our discussion about it you know probably a week ago was you know maybe this is what nascar intended the whole time they they didn't think right. only 10 <laughs> guys were going to win races for the year right they mm-hmm. thought they thought they were going to fill up the spots but even back then like when the chase first happened it was only 10 12 guys or 10 guys right. but right? jimmy was always pooping drivers. the show but yeah, and you know the chase was all all developed to stop Jimmy, and it never did. Um, this isn't a talk about right, how yeah. I feel about the chase. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, this could be the the time that we see points kind of making a bigger a um, have more meaning uh, when it comes down to the getting into the playoffs than it has in the past right yeah right so be... now guys you'll see guys that have won races not uh, not that they ever let up but they're gonna have to stay on it right consistency is right. still gonna count or maybe you know uh it's gonna be a, a poke in the butt for some of these guys where usually in the past you would see you get a win and you're kind of you take it easy for for some races you don't have to worry about necessarily winning but yeah you know what just because you've got one it it's gonna potentially look like i mean in other words i'm gonna say if you're one of the guys who've got one win i definitely want to stop this trend from continuing of new winners every week because it's gonna yeah. end up looking like well so what i got one win i mean it, it doesn't stop there then and i think that's an interesting aspect there where you're gonna see you know, you're going to see guys usually in the past sandbag it, and they're not going to be sandbagging it now. Well, and you're going to see drivers like, unfortunately, Michael McDowell, oh, where... That's a guaranteed where, spot, and I predicted that a couple months ago in February. I, that's, that's a guaranteed out spot for that first round in the playoffs. Sorry, well, 100%, and, that's, <laughs> and, that, and he's also a position, although he had a good result here at Talladega, that's a position, and he's actually been doing good all year. Unless so I'm he not wins that to, Daytona not, race, the Coke Four, unless trying, he wins the Coke Four Hundred. Yes, yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to shit on Michael McDowell, but right. yeah. the, the point the point is is that of of a lot of the drivers that I would say are going to be in the chase, if we get more than you know the 16 winners, and it's going to go down to points. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that we're even talking that, about it. <laughs> he's a driver you would consider might 
be one that would get knocked out. Right. Like he's been having a solid year. You know, a win will... He had a good look there at the end of that race. So, so did Matty did. D. I mean, a win, a win will uh, change can change your whole outcome for a season, right? That's winning the Daytona 500 can definitely give that big momentum push a team needs. Absolutely, even a team that's not. They actually had to use a backup car um, or a backup teammate's car, but apparently it was just as good as the car that won. And and as you saw, he was just as good almost as the yeah. car that won. So he's obviously yeah. with how it's the tradition that the Daytona 500 car has to sit for a certain amount of time in the museum. A year. There, a, day, a year, right? A year. So, um, but, you know, he had clearly, and it's interesting, I'd love to, love to see what's, you know, you, you know, you're seeing some of those teams, these independent teams, and, you think about with front row, uh, well, with not front row. Um, was it Rick Ware? Who's who's doing the full time in Cup next year? That just announced. Um, oh, no, now you're catching colleague? me off guard. Colic. Colic. Yep. Stuff like that, man. I, you know what? I'm getting excited about the the. You know, we're seeing these. I want. I want more. Matty D. I want more. I want more. Um, what's his face is McDowell's to wins because. Yeah. You know, it's going to bring more of these independent teams, and who knows, colleague might be a force to be reckoned with at some point. But we'll see what happens, obviously, next year, and, and they'll be in a new car too with the next gen. We'll see, and I think that, and think Even the next gen, field. you know, again, people are going to want to, you know, shit all over the next gen car and whatnot. But the the next gen car, hopefully, a little flatten the brings field. people. Like I think people forget, and and and. I, I had this conversation with my father because he's, you know, my dad's going to turn 70 this year and he's a very old school race car right. guy, right? And, um, you know, we talk about, you know, NASCARs aren't fuel injected and, or sorry, aren't carbureted anymore and, and, and right. this and that, whatever they're changing. And my dad would go, well, you know, it, it's not like it used to be, blah, 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 blah. Okay. It's not like it used to be. That's fine. But ne- we're in a time where a company, doesn't just want to spend its money frivol- frivolously, right? They there needs to be meaning behind that money spent, especially a company that answers to somebody else, right? Right? A company, mm, all companies absolutely. answer to shareholders. They answer to shareholders. Yeah. And if they cannot justify the money being spent, they're not interested. Right. So, the next generation car is a way to cut down costs for manufacturers for GM and Toyota, entice new manufacturers in i hope people are crucified me for this <laughs> honda maybe <laughs> maybe you'll you'll see dodge be interested in it again if it's not going to cost so much um and then you're going to see teams and you're going to see independent teams who want to come into racing because they're calling this new car is going to be a um uh, what do you call it? a spec car, right? The only thing different in the car is going to be the engine. And, and I think suspension like shocks and, and stuff like that, I think you can still work on. But the point is, is that that brings the cost down and it brings the competitiveness up. Look at IndyCar. IndyCar is killing it under that model right now. It is excellent racing with excellent drivers and you're seeing new sponsors want to be involved. And I think this is what they're hoping will happen in NASCAR. And I I think this is a good thing. And then you get teams like Colleague Racing saying, hey, we want to run full time next year. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and and who knows, maybe we can go back to this and and quote the <laughs> you know, uh, sound bite it or whatever. And, 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 you know, I think that'd be cool. I, I kind of secretly hope so because I do hope Colleague Racing does because of that everyone's going to have that next gen car next year and hopefully it'll be everyone everyone's driving the same new car so it'll be interesting to see what happens there um and we yeah. least, we almost saw that similarly happen at the current or at the beginning of this gen the gen mm-hmm. 6 and we almost saw that you know Toyota came out of nowhere uh you know I I think of front row racing specifically yeah um so uh so you know things like that hopefully we'll sound bite this that would be really cool and uh, with, sweet. with news like that, you know, obviously, uh, hopefully you see Dinger come back full time in the cup. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Um, go, going back to uh, Brad K here, though, you know, he, he had damage earlier on in, in the race. And he, despite that, he was in, he was able to, you know, 
come out from a wreck his teammate victory. would have been. Right, yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, that, yeah, that was a cra- that was crazy. Another, and another th- so that wreck, uh, you know, wreck. Um, it was like uh, my jaw dropped. I remember it was like a jaw dropping thing. And I'm like, oh, man. You know, I, I didn't think, you know, it was potentially another Ryan Newman, but Joey yeah. made a great point in the post-race interview that it was one bar or whatever away from being, or it was one whatever away from being another Ryan Newman wreck. Well, have, and he have had a good heard... point, I felt like. Yeah. Did Absolutely. you hear, I listened to um, the, the rate, oh, what do they call it? Um, radioactive. They right. always ask up on YouTube and he made comment in the car to his team about the bar hitting his head on his when he was on his mm-hmm. roof so yeah i don't and, know and what i saw it? a picture of it too and yeah you could tell that that would be a crappy situation where you could feel you could have felt that um yeah you know that'd just, be scary and, yeah just be scary to walk out. and we've also we've seen a lot of airborne wrecks and it comes out of you know crazy crazy prediction here folks maybe they should <laughs> add a chicane in the backs no you oh, see it coming down. Yeah. You always kind of see it in between the end of the backstretch into the, you know, uh, anywhere from as far as the entry to turn three to even up to the middle of the turn. But most of the time, you see a lot of cars get airborne after coming out of that, that end of the track. And I'd be curious to see what what comes behind that. And maybe I wonder if just even it comes down to what freaking direction the wind's blowing in that day. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, be interesting to find out because they they got this package so down pat, and you still hear drivers saying this is still not safe, uh, mm-hmm. and that's crazy, man. Uh, because they, they you talk about all this advancements, and, you know, you hear about you hear about all these advancements and how safe it is, but that was that could have been that was an inch away of being pretty bad. I I don't know what would have happened with like I could have cracked this. I don't know what it would have done. I'm not a you know, I'm not a scientist or a physicist, or anything, <laughs> but that probably wouldn't have been good if it was another inch inch in, and that was real no. close from being a disaster, real close. Yeah, it was. Too close. And um, I don't know. It's a, what do you say to that, right? Like, oh, you know, it's still not safe enough. Okay, it's not. It's dangerous. To and a begin lot of with. people don't like Logano, so they just say he's a pussy or something like that. And it's I don't like, think that. I think he's raising a point of concern right. that they need to they need to address a clear. This is okay. This is what I think. Uh, just kind of off the top of my head, it's kind of kicked it into drive. Clearly, there's an issue with the car in that point of the car, right? There's it's it's weaker at that point of the car, um, and they need to NASCAR clearly needs to address that point of the car. Um, do I think the cars are unsafe? No. Um, is racing dangerous? Yes. Do yeah. I believe it? Do I believe in mitigating stupid chances? Like if it's, if they can do something to make it safer, that's not ridiculous. Like, Oh, we'll just, we'll just, you know, slow the racing down and they'll race at Talladega at 50 miles an hour. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But if it's something like, Oh, we need to add some reinforcing bars in the roll cage. Like if you look at supercars, um, they have an interesting roll bar that goes right up the windshield and, t- um, kind of V's off. It's, it's a weird, I don't know how to describe it, but if you look at their in car, they do have this interesting bar that comes up that NASCAR does not have on the windshield, right? It's like from, it's almost from the firewall to the roof. Uh, and it, and it comes up on an angle. Um, Mm -hmm. it comes from, from basically the passenger. Okay. So we're, they drive on the right side of the car, not the left side. So I'll paint that picture, but it comes from in their cars, (laughs) the passenger side, a pillar almost, and it comes to the center of the roof. Right. And that's so the driver it's so it's the bar doesn't impede in the driver's view. Um, but it's still it's adding a lot of strength to that front part of the roof right where it meets the windshield. And maybe that's something NASCAR needs to look at. Yeah, and they're they're they did announce this week that they're going to be investigating it. So There'll obviously be some stuff coming out of that coming soon. I'm, it'd be interesting to hear what they're going to do and see what they're going to do and, and all the tests well, that will run behind that. And 
it is interesting to see a car get airborne uh, nowadays, especially with all of the stuff they put on the cars so they don't go airborne, right? The roof mm-hmm. flaps, yeah. the, the flaps on airborne. the hood, and, and it still gets <laughs> airborne. But like you said, I think a lot of that has to do with – I mean it has to do with where did you get spun out? Did you hit the apron? Yeah, he, Was ended it starting... sitting, he ended up hitting the friggin' banking. Like, God. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. All, all it takes is some wind, and Talladega is notoriously windy, right? Mm-hmm. So – and um, you know whether you like Logano or not, it's still rough. To, I think that's still tough to see. And you, you're gonna have to say, you know, you hate to see that. And I, you know, of course, there's people that go out there and say, oh, I wish it was worse. But you know, that, I'm glad it wasn't. That's for sure. And, but yeah, at the end of the day, though, um, you know, they they walked out, and it was interesting to see how it, like uh, art invent or life imitated art. I can say the mm. wrong one too. Art imitated life. Um, <laughs> life imitated art though with uh, the end of the i race because they did that a few days before the real race and same thing logano went airborne same part of almost the same part of the track and then because yeah. lesky wins the race so i think that was interesting how that worked and i think maybe we'll be interesting to see down the road some of those races maybe those i races maybe predicting if you will potentially real life races that'd be cool that'd be cool to see i think that'd be interesting, that'd be interesting that's interesting for sure um so yeah so all-star race talk here a lot of people were confused about it um i think it's real cool they they moved it from charlotte to bristol from last season and now they're going to texas june 13th and they just released the format for the 100 lap exhibition race and i and i like to hear what people think about this it's really confusing and the race winner will continue to receive a one million dollar check at the end which still stands the same and still no points towards the driver standings and the, the basics of what changes include the race being broke down into six stages or rounds with the field being inverted before the start of some of the stages. So, so they won't on, know folks. what stage is being inverted. <laughs> so it could, so the first four rounds are 15 laps each. The fifth round is 30 laps and the final round is 10 lap shootout for the checkered flag and only green flags will count towards the total. So their complete explanation of the format official. This is it. The race will feature six rounds totaling hundred laps starting lineup for round one will be determined via random draw. And apparently they will be televised and shown. Um, rounds one. Go that? ahead. Finish, finish this and we'll talk. Rounds about one it. through four will be 15 laps each. Round five will be 30 laps. The final round will feature a 10 lap shoe, as we mentioned. At the beginning of round two, the field will be inverted via random draw and shown on the FS1 feed. And the round two random draw will be shown um, to live fans. In the track, so who maybe they'll go to commercial break on TV or something to say it when they come back. Before mm. the start of round three, the entire field will be inverted. And at the beginning of round four, they'll be in place where they'll the field will be inverted via random draw. <laughs> Can I ask a question real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What's the point of inverting so, after a random draw? Texas. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or could you know, just to make an I extra. Mean? Just um, to make an extra. Okay, so they all drew this, and now we're going to switch them around. Like, I understand more of inverting the top, t- like in F2, right? They invert the top t- 10 finishing order. So if you finish 10th, you yeah. start pull for the for the, for the sprint race or whatever. But why would you invert after a random draw? Well, it'll be inverted via random draw. So isn't that the same thing, basically? Like, uh, I don't so, know. Yeah, I, don't, I know of, what you mean. Seems a little, seems a little redundant. Mean. Yeah. Starting positions anyway. for round five will consist of the culminative finish from rounds one to four. So the lowest culminative finisher starts on the pole. Second lowest starts second and so forth. So all cars must enter pit road for a mandatory four stop as well at that point and during the round five. And the starting positions in the final round are set by fin- finishing positions of round five. Actually, now I'm going through this. Through this, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> the red starting Holy, positions. This is so, incredibly complicated. Yeah. So for no the, reason. And I, I'll, I'll explain why in a racing? second. I'll explain why in a second. Only green flag laps will count, and uh, the fastest team during the mandatory stop will earn hundred grand, and the winner will be 
million dollars richer. And now, because let's be honest, and and I'm sure you've seen some racing at Texas, and especially since they did the turn, can't. And I'll quote the great Kyle Bush: "Can't pass here." They're in a situation where they brought an all-star race to a, Wait a, a second, crap the all-star track. race. The all-star race is at Texas. It's at Texas this year. So it, the, when did they change that? They're because they're trying to change it every year now. So now they decided, and I'll tell you I'll why: like because they can do they can do full capacity in Texas. That's another reason mm. why. So it's just all convenient. But because it's they just basically want to shake things up. It is basically what I want to say as. If we're to summarize everything that we just said in the last five minutes, basically NASCAR just wants to sh- really shake things up like a boggle, a boggle game. Like this is yeah, but it's it's, gonna d- be now crazy. it sounds like they're just doing it because they they just got to sh- like you're saying shake it up. So now they're just going to do well. It's the All Star race. It's a gimmick stupid. race. Okay, but now it just doesn't make sense. Now it's a gimmick that just doesn't make well, sense. We'll see what happens. Well, we're honestly, I, I think that's the point of the All-Star Race is so that it's just crazy. You know what they should do? So here's my All-Star Race, okay? You're gonna, they're going to do it out of track, wherever it is. Qualifying is going to be done by the fastest pit crew. So you're <laughs> okay. going to come in for a pit stop, and whoever sets the fastest pit stop time is going to get pole position. You're going to run 40 laps. Uh, cautions will not count. That finishing order will, uh, you know, you'll drive off and go get the cars touched up and fixed on. Uh, fastest lap will, you'll set the next grid by fastest laps, and which will make it interesting because you're going to get people who are going to get fast laps because of drafting. And then you're going to do a 60 lap shootout. Uh, that is going to have to take, um, you're going to have to make a pit stop. That'll be interesting. That, that, uh, I'm, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, who knows? Pitch that idea to Wes's face. Uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can get that going. That'd be, that'd be yeah. interesting. That might be entertaining. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I just, it's, it's not any more complicated than, um, what they're actually doing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it'd be interesting to see. Hey, you know what? If you're listening or watching out there, let's let's hear your ideas on the All Star Race and let's let's see what your All Star Race would be. I'd like to see other people's pipe dreams, like Wallace over here. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see other people's. Uh, you know, hey, that, you know that's cool, and and um, you know, and uh, hey, you know, we're gonna have to just see how it goes in a couple months. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I mean. <sighs> Like a like a an idiot, I'll sit and watch the race. You know, yeah. complain like I do this all the time with racing, right? Complain, 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 but then I'll just sit and I'll watch. I'll watch the race anyways. Exactly so, right. I'll watch and my I'm a race fan no matter what. We're all about so, racing here. We're racing yeah. lovers. Yeah. Yeah, and, and hey, you know what? Uh, it was good today, and um, you know we'll. Uh, you know, it will, we'll wrap it up on that. Hey, man, you know, we, we got uh, some good racing this week and look forward to. Yeah. We'll be back around the bend, folks, with some more from the wide world of motorsports. Hi, this is Alex Seagliani, NASCAR Pinty Series driver. You're tuned in from the track to the community on Wide World of Motorsports, the number one motorsport show in the community.